Interface Video, in cooperation with Fairfield Federal, presents Fairfield Today. Brought to you by Fairfield Federal Savings and Loan, Fairfield Medical Center, Fairhope Hospice and Palliative Care, the Frankie Smith Funeral Home, Fairfield County Adam H., Dagger Law, and the Fairfield County Board of Developmental Disabilities. Hello friends and welcome to Fairfield Today. I'm Paul Jasson. Thank you for joining us. We are again in the lobby downtown at Fairfield Federal where even in 2021 they are celebrating their Quasco Centennial 125 years banking. That is kind of carried over as, as many events have been from 2020 which is was really the 125th anniversary of Fairfield Federal. So, But that's carrying over. You'll see We'll have some commercials about that and talk about that, but uh, we thank them for allowing us to come in. Lobby is closed here. You're by appointment only when you come into Fairfield Federal these days, but you can certainly call them up and they'll get you in here if you want to come in. So thank you for joining us on Fairfield today. Our first guest, a uh, pleasure to have her back on. We've uh, It's been several months since we've had her on. The Executive Director of Big Brothers and Big Sisters, Jolynn Pugh. Jolynn, thank you. Thank you. What a great way to start the year out, hanging well, out with friends. Well, we, we, we think we're the lucky one to have <laughs> you on. Uh, big brothers and big sisters, everybody knows what a wonderful organization that is. And I think uh, it's been several months since we've had you on. It was prior to your uh, virtual telethon that you had, or, or uh, auction, yeah. I guess, auction that you had in, in drawing and all that. And uh, you can tell us about that, but uh, we gather that went well. But how was uh, Big Brother and Big Sister kind of weathered all this last year? You know, it's been a long year. Yeah. It's been a long year. Yeah. And I hate focusing on the negative because there were a lot of negatives. Yeah. You know, we had to cancel our bowling event. Bigs and Littles weren't allowed to see each other face to face for a while. Mm. For um, you, that's not that's, good. That's, you know, connection is all, sure. what we're all about. And sure. so that was hard. It was hard to kind of stop everything and then you know reconfigure how we do everything we do the matches the interviews the whole process um but we did it you know and out of it came some great things too um we had our highest event that we've ever had for dream big um that event we sold out all the tickets mm. which is fabulous to sell 350 dollar tickets um, so that was great. We had a great turnout. I think the videos um, that Interface Video helped with getting our bigs and littles to be a part of the event was um, amazing. So people got to hear about some of the great things they were doing. And our bigs and littles started pen palling. So they mm. started sending letters and cards and doing porch drops and being creative on how to stay connected. And I think that for all the negative that COVID has given us, um, and will continue to give us for a while. Um, there were some positives that came out and kids still remain connected. Our community stepped up. We made 120 matches since COVID hit. Mm. And that's fabulous. It, it's, and I've heard this from, a, we interview a lot of nonprofits. Mm -hmm. We do a lot of nonprofits here and almost all of them and many other businesses in general have had to change the way they do things like they have great big events like you normally do with your auction and, and giveaway and you had to go virtual but i think in almost all the cases they've been like you said they did at least as as good and maybe better and and i think what and i'm sure you would verify this some of the changes you've made this year this past year that you've had to change because of the covid if bang today, no more COVID, no nothing. Yeah. I bet you'd still keep some of those changes. You found out that some of those things really have helped you. Absolutely. Being able to add a whole new program, e-mentoring, you know. E-mentoring. Yeah, so virtual e mentoring, where maybe you write letters during the month and cards back and forth, but you also have a time that you get on Zoom and have interaction that way. Um, it's been amazing. And you know, someone told me the other day from another part of the state, that they really didn't see the value in some of those connections um, because they hadn't tried it. Mm. And I was like, you, if you listen to these matches yeah. virtually, it is fabulous. They have dance parties, they, do, they cook together. One big took a um, 
part of the battleship game to his little, and then he had the other half, and they played <laughs> battleship that way. You know, it's what you put in. Yes. So if you really are, are going to be connected to your little in an in-person session, you'll find session, a way. You'll find a way to do it yeah, yeah. Uh, virtually. Um, and it's been fabulous. I mean, I love hearing the giggles because we supervise all the the online matches, and you hear the giggles all day throughout the office. Nice, nice um, touch. And, you know, we have one big, her little, has kind of a messy bedroom. <laughs> so Which the, you can see. Which you can see, because they're in the bedroom. And so the big, every week, she's like, okay, let's clean up this today. <laughs> get so, on her a little yeah. bit. And she's a teenager, too. The big is a teenager. Well, so. I bet there's a little bit to get on there, too. <laughs> so, so, she, so we've just, of course, gone through the Christmas season a few weeks yeah. ago, and... Uh, I thought you guys came up with some creative ways for your bigs and littles to celebrate Christmas, most of it virtually, but yep. some creative ways. We did. So um, actually, Fairfield Federal has always sponsored a match enrichment activity every year so that we can take all of our bigs and littles um, and do something together. Yep. Well, this year we weren't able to have the Christmas party. We weren't able to go to Kings Island. We weren't able to do those things, but we were able to safely go to the Columbus Zoo to see the, the zoo lights. Zoo lights. Yeah, sure. so we had our Christmas party at the zoo. Um, oh, nice. We met for a brief time, got our photos, and said hi to everybody, and, and um, you know had a great time. And then the matches went off and, and did their thing. We had a competition. Mm -hmm. So it was who could get their photos taken with the most things at the zoo. Um, and they sent them to me, so it was so much fun. We got to actually kind of be together uh, the whole time because they were sending photos throughout the evening and I got to see where everybody was and, and how much fun they were having. Um, and, you know, we had some great, great partners <clears throat> in the community to allow us to uh, be able to have those. those so so we, we go through that Christmas season and as I understand it, some of the things you did, and, and we always talk about if people want to donate their time, of course, you bring those on, but people can donate other things too. And, and, and as I understand it, uh, the donation of things, and I never thought of this, very creative again on your part, uh, if anybody had or even still has uh, an unwanted Christmas gift. We all get yeah. things that maybe that's not for us, but it's from, a, okay, thank you so much, and then yeah. you move on, you let it sit in a box right. for a year. But if it's anything that could be used in the big brother, big sister setting, uh, you're all about that. Absolutely. You know, little things from gift cards that you maybe a restaurant you don't like or um, to a, a, an event that you probably wouldn't go to, to, you know, a game that you didn't really like, a movie, um, everything. And, you know, it's difficult to return things after Christmas. Sure. There's always these hassles. And now with COVID, there's probably some extra steps that we have to go through. Mm, a lot of hoops. A lot of hoops. So we can take those items and use them for our matches. We can use them as um, raffle items, if it's something that we could raffle off. Sure. Um, say you got two items and you didn't need both. You yeah. know, of the same yeah, thing. Yeah, duplicate. Yeah, instead of returning it, um, you could donate it uh, to an agency like ours. And I'm sure there's many other agencies that would feel that yeah. way too. Great um, idea. Especially the gift cards. Yeah. Um, you know, a $50 gift card to a store you probably wouldn't go to, doesn't mean that much to you, but it could change the life of a little, easily. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so I think that's what, um, you know, the giving season should be lasting all year. And, and I think how to make you've, smile. you've got a, a particularly good story. I do. About, a, a, and a gift card, again, a great gift. We understand that. But a Walmart gift card mm -hmm. gift, that was really something. Yes. So during our reverse raffle that um, you helped us with, someone won a $50 Walmart gift card. And it wasn't a store they normally shop at. So she said, just keep it and use it for the matches. And we said, okay. So we, you know, we had it there. And um, we heard a story about one of our little saying that they didn't have food. And for any of, the, of us that have teenagers in the house or kids, you never have food in the house. You know, it's never what they want. So they, they act like um, you don't have anything. So we were kind of unsure about the situation. Um, after talking to the parents, uh, we did find out that they were out of food. They had mm. been living on um, potatoes and pasta at Christmas time. for months. Yes. Wow. Um, and you know, COVID had taken away a job. COVID had had made it very difficult because now all kids are living at home. You know, they're not getting the lunch and the breakfast at school, and so mm. financially, food was the last thing that they were buying. Um, and so, that gift card was sitting there, 
and we were able to give it to a family to actually buy food for the next day because they had nothing for the next day. And because of that, I texted the person that donated it. I was going to say, did you let them know? <laughs> I did, and I let them know, and I said, you know, I want you to know that that gift card, giving it back, didn't really affect you um, very much, but you've just changed an, an entire family um, because now they have food tomorrow, and that'll get me enough time to, to help get other resources. From that text, that person texted two more people. At the end of the day, I had $1,300 to be able to provide. That's unbelievable. To provide nine families. Oh my. With Christmas, food, gas cards, and everything that they needed. And um, it was an absolutely chaotic <laughs> and fabulous, fabulous time. And it was right before Christmas. So it was like the 18th. Um, and we Perfect. were running around <laughs> doing things. So, you know, just those small acts of kindness, even if it would have been $25, that would have bought that family food the next day. Sure, sure. And so those small acts that may not seem like a lot to you really can change someone else's perspective. That little will never forget what happened this Christmas. Um, it will be a story they tell many years to come, um, as well as us. But. I, you know, I want to thank my Christmas angels. I don't know if I have permission to share who they are, um, but they truly have impacted our, um, the children that we serve. And we have a few gift cards left. So we have, for the next emergency, we, we don't have to send the call out mm -hmm. <laughs> necessarily, mm -hmm. um, but we could always use more because there's always a need. And unfortunately, COVID puts individuals in a situation that maybe they're not used to. And so they don't know where to reach out. And that's where our agency kind of can connect. And, and no gift is too small. It doesn't no, have to be a $50 no. gift card. It could be a $5. $5. You'll find <laughs> use. <laughs> yes. No. And, you know, if our bigs and littles, you know, we have college kid bigs. They can't afford to, to no. do a lot of stuff. So a $5 gift card to Art and Clay or, you know, anywhere in town would give them you know, a little bit of money off of what they're purchasing for their little. Got JoLynn Pugh with us. She's executive director of Big Brother Big Sisters and your big comedy special, right? Well, not right around the corner, but coming up it in is, a different in a different up. venue. It's a different venue, and we're very excited. So it's going to be at the Max venue, which is down off of Main Street, behind Totten's carpet. Behind Totten, know where it um, is? It's huge. It's like thirty thousand square feet. It is huge. And I can promise you that we can be in Tot or in this venue. Uh, max venue we can have 500 people socially distanced yeah it's so huge. it will be safe and they can park inside <laughs> they can park inside uh, so um, no when is that um it, it's going to be april 10th april and yep. tickets are available now i have now. the tickets in my hand we had hoped for february but that's not going to happen sure um because of covid but april 10th um and we know we all need a drink and a laugh <laughs> <laughs> in that order. <laughs> in that order. So we are so going to still try to get together. So contact your office. Yes, uh, absolutely. You have to call your office to, to get, the, yes. get the tickets? Okay. Yeah, and we are going to sell them by tables. Okay. So we can do a table of two. What's your number? 740-687-9477. Um, and you're selling the table? Yes. So you can buy a table of two, a table of four, a table okay. of six. So it's... You know, try Believe to, me, to that, keep it with that your group. place can accommodate anything. Know, it is a it. big stage up there where the band plays and, and looking out. I mean, great sound system. I mean, it's a. We had the gentleman on that owns that, and he gave me a tour of that place six months ago now, and I was just flabbergasted I know. that this place. You look outside, it's a, well, look at this kind of. It looks like a warehouse or something. You yeah. go inside, and he has done remarkable things. Like that cityscape that's on oh. the one wall. It's gorgeous. Yeah. Um, big brothers, big sisters, uh, Jill and Pew, going to be pretty cool to have all this going on. I mean, 2021 or 20 wasn't yeah. as you wanted, but right. 2021 already starting out to be, you're back in line now, yes. getting going. Very good. Good luck and Thank you. New Year, we'll have you back on. Awesome. Thank Jill you so Lynn much. Jill and Pew with big brothers and big sisters, and we'll be back in just a moment. The Frankie Smith Funeral Home and Crematory in Lancaster and the Johnson Smith Funeral Home in Baltimore have a long and wonderful history of serving our community. Feel free to give us a call at 740-653-0652. Stop in and see us at either of our two locations, 405 North Columbus Street in Lancaster and 207 South Main Street in Baltimore. Respect for tradition, regard for change. Fairfield Federal. 
When it comes to our customers and our community, we go above and beyond to help. Our people make the difference. We were uh, retiring from Tucson, Arizona, and we made a retirement trip out around Ohio, having decided where we wanted to be. And we came across this town called Lancaster, and we fell in love with the downtown area, where the fountain is, and the memorials, and the flags, and, and all this stuff. And I looked around and I said, there's our bank, right there. There's something to be said about a, a community bank in your hometown. Right. If you live in the community, you should do business in the community as much as possible. So it makes sense to bank with the community bank that you, where you live. Fairfield Federal is the bank to be at. If, you're a bit, if you live in this town, or any town actually, you want to bank at a local home bank. And the employees are happy here, they're conversant, customer service is through the roof. There's nothing more you could ask for. Personal or business banking, whatever you need, we take it seriously because we know you do. Stop by today at any of our three locations and see why the difference is clear. Fairfield Federal Savings and Loan specializes in banking that revolves around you. Member FDIC Equal Housing Lender. Thanks to Joe Lynn Pugh and Big Brothers Big Sisters for coming on. Give us a good update. It's a great organization. I'd encourage you to go on there and look up their website. they got a lot of information on there. It's very good. Uh, again, thanks to Fairfield Federal for having us in today. We appreciate it very much. Lobby's closed. They let us come in. Still call fairfieldfederal.com. Get all the information right there. Uh, time for another update, and as I've mentioned practically with every interview I've done, nobody I've talked to since we've been back, and it's been a long time, March, April, May, somewhere in there, uh, we don't start out with some COVID information because that's affected every person, every organization that we talk to, and, and it will be no different here. Pleasure to have Paul Martin with us. Paul is a service safety director for Lancaster. and. Um, in talking with the mayor and talking with the fire chief and talking with lots of people, the health department, uh, Larry Hanna there. Uh, city's pretty involved in what's going on here. Very much so, Paul. And uh, there probably isn't a day that doesn't go by I'm no. not addressing some COVID-related issue with an employee. Yeah. Uh, you know, we have certain protocols we follow. Uh, just had, a, had some this morning, as a matter of fact, but every day. Yep. and trying to ensure not only our employees but also as we deal with the public to ensure their safety and to try to get a handle on this COVID. Hopefully we'll be at a, a day where we can see this pandemic disappear. Uh, and and one, one I think about just, just quickly was uh, a couple times when the levy was still up we had uh, the fire chief Dave Ward on and early on they really got hit. Yes, they did. And they're doing a lot better. Oh, yeah. And one of the big things is uh, when somebody calls for a service from our paramedic service, and if they are being quarantined or they think they have actually been tested positive, it's really important to tell the yeah. 911 dispatcher. Let them know. As I've said before. Sure. And then they go to a full PPE uh, suit up and everything, which they do some small stuff all the time, masks and gloves and sure. glasses but they'll go a different protocol. So we're doing a little bit better in that aspect, mm -hmm. but uh, 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 we're here to serve. It's, it's here for a while and, it, and, and certainly it's a big part of what you do, but, but life goes on. Yes. The city still has, I'm amazed at how, and I'm sure I don't even know of all of them, but I'm amazed at everything, uh, the projects that the, that the city continues to do through all of this, that you know, life has to move on, the city has things to do, it must yes. do it because it is the city. I wanted to talk about some of them, uh, out on Edie Road, you got some things going on. Well, out there actually, now. it just started last week. So, okay. you know, this is a great opportunity. Uh, <clears throat> Ohio Department of Transportation has given us amazing grant funding. Now, we have some of our own funds coming in, but we're going to take this one little block of Edie Road right next to Hugh White Chevrolet between Columbus and Edie uh, Memorial Drive. And we're going to widen that road. We're going to get some turn lanes. We're going to do a signal on Columbus Street. And so this is a big project. South Central is there currently right now. That's a right busy now. area right Very there. busy. And, and one of the reasons why after the job is done, like a lot of them, <clears throat> you're going to go, this is great. But what is not fun is when we affect the traffic and we're under construction and people are going to get, get impatient. There's other and, comments made yeah, there. And they're going to be honking their horn and they're just going to say, 
you know, let's work this out. And yeah. I'm sorry, I, we're going to do our best to try to control. Got to break traffic. a few eggs. Yes, yes. And and we we've, we've seen this ourselves. We've been in lines yeah. waiting because yeah. of construction yeah. traffic. But it is the right thing to do, and we should be able to complete that hopefully by the fall, uh, into the fall. Uh, we'll have that and, done. And you're doing some stuff out there at Timbertop. Yes, right? so if you got a lot right going there, on there. Right behind and so those. The uh, we just had a planning commission last week, and uh, the uh, Lemon Group they came in and they presented a plat to us, and they're going to do the first phase of the of the public road that's going to go up through there, and they're going to lay their sewer and their water and natural now, gas. No, this a housing and, development. So it's going to be first. We're going to probably see a assisted living like facility. Phase one on phase okay. one, and then there's gonna be a group of apartments on the other side of the road. And then in the top section, the north section, when the road is completed to hopefully connect, uh, not hopefully, it's gonna be connected to the River Valley Highlands, there'll be some more residential areas up there like patio homes for people who might wanna to go to the assisted living someday and they, they don't have to worry about stairs. And then there might be either some condos or residential up now, in that north. And I think corner. of this as the old side Fulton place. I mean, that's yes. that's what I think of right. as going through school, Fulton Field, all that was side Fulton. Now, uh, I've been to some events up there when some when the Muses owned it after side right. Fulton is the uh, horse, barn or they had a fabulous did they keep anything will they keep so anything in there they are their only thing they're going to keep is the house okay i got that it. house is going to be preserved and it is on at least an acre of land yeah, yeah. and we got a promise and a commitment from the new <clears> owner <throat> because they're making it fit into their plan sure good and and i it's think good. it i think it actually might they might be marketing it eventually down the road to sell for somebody to own yeah. and live but it'd be a plus to keep it if you yes. can obviously right and and another one that uh, kind of I didn't know about and you told me about that up and down 33 this fiber optic that that we're we're is just going through here we're not so involved in it but it's going through but it's a big deal it's a big project we've been working on this with <clears> this <throat> company it's called the Zeo fiber optic project that's connecting Columbus Ohio and going to be going over to Richmond, Virginia. Now, they, and, and there's other places in the country where you have this. And so we are a small part of this of this project, but they are, they have started here in Lancaster. They're starting up on Collins Road and there's companies that are doing certain segments and then they'll connect them. But you see them right now on Memorial Drive near Main Street, Wheeling, as you see them working up there. And it's all bored underground. Mm. The boring technology is really amazing, Paul. Yeah. How they can go up under there and they can direct that bore and go under a rock or around a rock and hopefully try to avoid any other assets <laughs> down there. If they strike gold, uh, you know, I'm supposed to be notified if they actually hit a pot of gold, but they haven't found anything yet. Yeah, but they'll let you know. Right, but they're bringing fiber in and that's going to all the way go down past Athens, cross the river, get over to Virginia. And it's all of the initiative of the state of Ohio and other states to bring uh, high speed connection. <clears throat> and especially in the in the area of, of data, uh, saving documents and things, files in the cloud, what we call data centers. And so there's gonna be a, provide a lot of uh, advancement for our area. So that's what you're seeing. It's it's a private company, but you're going to see them working pretty aggressively yeah, yeah. right now. And we've got some other projects, and if we have time, I'll get back to them. But I wanted to, to hit a couple other things too. Uh, right now, there's snow plowing. We haven't had much of it, fortunately. Uh, there's been some things they 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 you know wet the streets down with their with their formula, and I've seen a lot of salt going on and a lot of things going on. We haven't had much, but uh, I think sometimes people don't get what they're supposed to do when there's a snow plow out there and there are some guidelines for this yes there are and uh you know we, we fortunately had a significant snow at christmas we had a white christmas yes we most of the years here we don't have a white christmas so it was a it was a real joy to see a beautiful christmas uh, but then again, our snow crews were out. We, we divide uh, our Department of Transportation up into two shifts. They work 12-hour shifts. So they started working Christmas Eve. They worked into, through Christmas even to the days after. But one of the two big things that I see, when snow is actively falling and, and you finish your main route, so you're going to go Main Street, Memorial Drive, and then you're going to get what I call the arterial roads after that. So that's going to be like Fair and 6th Avenue. Kanawha, Pleasantville Road, you get some of these 
main streets uh, that are state routes, but also arterial streets, and they have a route that they go through. They're either plowing and dropping salt, and if the snow is still falling, <clears throat> they have to go right back and continue on and just a continued yes. circle of that yes. route. So when you have active, heavy snowing, we are not even gonna begin to get into the residential. But when it stops, we can get caught up on those streets, then we work our way into residential areas. And uh, we had a few complaints because they didn't <laughs> understand. Uh, and, I, and I feel bad, I understand we've all had to do this. You know, you get out, shovel your sidewalk, your driveway, you got a beautiful approach going into your house and then the snow plow comes along <laughs> and rolls a big chunk of snow right up in front. Yeah. And I'm sorry, yeah. but some of us have been around for a long time. That's just the way life goes because yeah. We could not stop and clear oh. over 20,000 driveways. Think about 20,000. I know that an individual has one driveway, but multiply that by 20,000 and think about if we could ever get to that. So I'm sorry. Um, we're just going to have to roll some yes. snow up in front yeah. of your nice, clean driveway. If that's I, the case. And, and I'm in a township, Pleasant Township, and when they come down, and I live in a cul-de-sac, so they don't come down all that often. So when they come down, it's pretty heavy. And I've got my driveway done, and all of a sudden there's this monster block out there. And it's usually a yeah. pretty good sized block, but that's, that's just part of the deal. Yes, yes. And move on. Don't yeah. call you about it. Well, I mean, you know, we have some light dustings here recently. Yes. Kind of a nice thing. And, uh, you know, uh, I appreciate snow. Snow can be fun, but also it can be treacherous. So, yes, we want to be careful. Uh, you know, and give may, these yeah. guys a little space, too. Well, and, you know, because, listen, Fairfield Federal it's got such a wonderful place here don't they right here on main street across yep. from city hall beautiful facility i just love this bank and if you go right up the main hill here right in front of their place they were spinning out and they couldn't get down because the snow was falling so fast so yes. active yes and uh but we try to get to it and and keep going on and, and we'll get things cleared out eventually and, and move on yes. i know yeah. i know if you live on a on our regular street you're, you're probably not the priority here but you are a priority just yes. not number one yeah, a lot of times by the time we get into the residential, yeah. the snow is a little packed already, but we'll try to do our job. And, and you know, the streets are always a big issue, Paul, because we, we've, we've got already planned and mapped out our street paving project for next year. Yeah. And one of the important parts is we're going to be finishing Fair Avenue from Let's High Street talk about that. to Memorial Drive. A little Drive. more paving. It needs yeah. it. Yeah, and we, we, were, we were scheduled to do that, but we flip-flopped. We went on to the east side of Fair Avenue from <clears throat> High Street all the way to Sheridan. So we're gonna do right in front of the fairgrounds, going all the way to Memorial. That, uh, that is uh, what's really wonderful. We got some funding from the state of Ohio to assist us with that project. And so we're looking forward to that. You know, <clears throat> it's I can remember when we did it the last time. Boy, does time fly by fast. <laughs> but with our snow and our freezing and our thawing and the amount of traffic, <clears throat> Uh, you go there, it does need that. But it's one of those streets that qualify for state funding. And so sometimes, like West 6th Avenue is a good example, a really, really tough street right now. Yep. But it qualifies for state funding, so we're trying to work our state funding, and we hold off on some streets that are pretty bad because we want to leverage that state funding to get the most out Maximum. of their money. Yeah. And then we can take some of our money and put it back into more of the residential streets. So a little patience helps us. Paul Martin, Service Safety Director with us. Got about a minute left, Paul. And uh, I had you, the mayor, gosh, the fire chief, lots of people on prior to the levy. Fortunately, the citizens deemed it, uh, it, was, it was a good thing and it passed. But now the fire department, police department, doing a little bit of hiring. So we've moved on. We are, we are. And we are so grateful for that support. Uh, we have a tall task in front of us trying to get people to per pick those professions. We uh, swore in a, a, a fireman just recently. I was grateful to make that hire. Uh, being a police officer is still a great profession. Yeah. Uh, so we're, we've made some recent hires there and hopefully we're going to restore the level that we want and go back to the level that we promised the citizens. And uh, we're going to fulfill our promise that we made to them by the support of that levy. Paul Martin, who is the Service Safety Director. Paul, thanks for joining us, uh, doing a great Thank job you. in the city, uh, just moving on, COVID or not, life goes on, got yes. things to do, makes it a little more difficult, but you're still getting it done. Well, we love being here. I love working for the city, and 
I just am so grateful for Fairfield Federal Bank here yeah. and just giving us this opportunity here. Well, thank you, Paul. Paul Martin with us, Service Safety Director. Thank you for joining us. Uh, and thank you for being with us on Fairfield Today. Interface Video, in cooperation with Fairfield Federal, presents Fairfield Today. Brought to you by Fairfield Federal Savings and Loan, Fairfield Medical Center, Fairhope Hospice and Palliative Care, the Frankie Smith Funeral Home, Fairfield County Adam H., Dagger Law, and the Fairfield County Board of Developmental Disabilities.